indul Londonban, megáll Győrben, Prágában, Frankfurtban, Honol és Brüsszelben. Tessenek beszállni! you a question? Sure. We're both on vacation, right? Yeah. And we're both here to see Paul in the ski tournament, right? Yeah. Well, is there any special reason that I'm carrying all the luggage, besides the fact that I'm younger, smaller, and more easily intimidated? Not that I can think of. That's what I thought. How do you do it? I'm so sorry I'm late. It was all those last-minute arrangements I had to make. You're looking wonderful. So are you. It's so good to see both of you again. It's been so long. Uh, as pleasant a mistake as this is, I'm afraid you've got the wrong... Time, time. Yes, I know. That's another reason why I'm late. I, I didn't think the train left until 11. Have you missed me? Oh, sure. We've, we've missed you. It's got to be at least five minutes since we bumped into you. Right. Let's go. I didn't think I was going to make it either. Please, just keep walking. Just get me to that train. Hey, what's going on? What are you afraid of? Those two men behind us? Luggage. Sure, I'll check on it. Sorry, my brother's just accident prone. He's always had. Can't take it. You through. almost stuck those stick right through me. I'm sorry. Frank, you must be more careful. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm sure she's got it with her. She might have worked a switch with an accomplice, but well, I don't know who she is, but I'll find out. Hey, hey, don't worry. We'll have it before the train reaches Austria. Well, I don't see her anywhere. Hopefully they don't either. She looked pretty frightened. 
Maybe we're just overreacting, huh? Yeah, right. It's an occupational hazard. Right. I, I, bet, I bet one of those guys was like an old boyfriend she jilted, and, and the other guy was somebody he brought along for emotional support. I bet we're in the middle of some huge, like, love scene here or something. Right. Right. Well, there's nothing more we can do. We might as well go on down and try to get on the train before we miss it. Yeah. Here. Wait a second. It's okay, I'll carry the tickets. Hi. You two like living on a knife's edge, don't you? Everything's a big mystery with you. Will they or won't they get to the train on time? Would you believe us if we told you we were delayed by a beautiful damsel in distress? No. What, don't I tell the truth convincingly or something? Mm, you're better with a lie. I should stick to those. They're easier to sell. Now if we can only find George. Nancy! <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. I had to stop and get that cuckoo clock that we saw. And you would not believe the traffic out there. Where are all these people going in Budapest? <laughs> Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Let's get on that train. Yeah. Oh, come on. You've been such a sweetheart. Porter. Porter. Oh, I'd never step in front of a beautiful woman. If I did, I wouldn't get to see her face. Thank you. see you guys. Really good. I didn't think you are going to make it. Well, it's exciting to be here. I mean, here we are with 15 of the world's greatest skiers. Mm -hmm. Where's the star performer? Do I know how to make an entrance? Hi, Frank. How you doing, Joe? <laughs> Paul? You certainly get chummy on this train, don't you? What happened to you? You were supposed to board the train with all the others. Well, I'd never been to Budapest. I had some sights to see. You both were supposed to report to me at the hotel. I have a responsibility to keep this team together. And you know you shouldn't be wandering around. I wasn't going anywhere. Uh, hey, guys, this is Hans Malkin, the great skier. It's Frank and Frank, Joe. Hello. Joe, I need you. A little friendly uh, advice. You stick with Leighton, and one day you're going to wake up either drunk, arrested, or dead. Mm. Well, I got a reputation that just doesn't quit. I mean, it follows me everywhere. Trouble follows you wherever you go. <laughs> well, I think you're pretty safe until we get to Altair. Nothing much is going to happen on a moving train. Do we eat now, or do I have to pretend that it wasn't an hour since that snack? This isn't mine. What? This isn't my bag. Of course it is. Transglobal. They fly to 180 cities around the world. I'd recognize it anywhere. I know it's a transglobal bag. It's not my transglobal bag. You mean you picked up somebody else's bag? I must have, or... What? I don't know. This is the girl who wanted change for the phone. She had a transglobal bag, too. I'd set mine down, and so did she. She must have picked up mine by mistake. What was in the bag? Our passports, all of our traveler's checks, our train tickets. Oh, Nancy. Maybe she got on the train. If she didn't, we're in a lot of trouble. I'll go try to find her. To my sister, Gina, be good, your brother, Dominic. So we meet again. For the second time, I feel compelled to introduce myself. My name is Alan Somerville. Nancy Drew, I'm looking for someone. A dark-haired American girl, early 30s, attractive. She'd be carrying a transglobal bag. I don't know if she boarded the train, but... I... I haven't seen anyone like that. 
It's very important that I find her. If you should happen to see her, I'm in the next car, two carriages down. I'll remember that. Thank you. Is there anything I can say to persuade you to have lunch with me? I'm sure you'll be able to think of something. Someone just passed you in the corridor? Nobody passed me. I must have gone the other way. Was there somebody in your room? Someone was searching it. Well, is there anything missing? I don't know. He's going through my suitcase. Everything seems to be here. I don't understand. That's strange, is it? I had a picture of myself with my brother and my father. It's gone. Why would anyone want to steal anything like that? I don't know. It's funny that you didn't see whoever it was if you were out in that corridor. He must have been moving awful fast. Probably heard me coming. Will you come and see me? Yeah, the boys want to know if you and Frank were going to stay on after the tournament. You know, do a little skiing. Probably. Well, I'd better go get lunch organized. Well, listen, I hope you don't find anything else missing. See you later. This is it? That's everything, including my purse. You haven't taken anything out of the bag? Not a thing. Well, it hardly looks as if there's anything here worth threatening someone's life for. A notebook, compact case, pen and pencil set, passport. Gina Bartelli, Fresno, California. Hmm. Traveler's checks. Five, six hundred dollars. It's not bad, but it's hardly a fortune. We know you've got it, and we want it. That's what he said. There's got to be something here that's not as innocent as it appears. That's 
it. The powder, the powder. Coke, angel dust, heroin. You're right. I am? Powder. Nothing here. Nothing in the notepad. Maybe the letters. What do they say? We shouldn't be reading other people's letters. Look, Nancy just had her life threatened. If it's because of one of these letters, I'd like to know what it says. What does it say? It's from her brother, Dominic, asking her to come to Budapest. Apparently, he has a place in the mountain, the chateau, and he wants her to visit her. Okay, let me see that. She's arriving on the 8th. Wait a minute, listen to this. There isn't much time. They're closing in on me. I'll explain everything later to you when you get here. So it was her brother they were after. Whoever they are, he must have had whatever it is they want. And he passed it over to his sister. But the answer's got to be here, right here. We're probably looking right at it. If there's something valuable here, I don't know what it is. There's nothing hidden in these letters. Let's get this stuff back in here. Well, I think it's time we return Gina Bartelli's back to her. Maybe she can tell us what it is they're after. I'd started to search the train for her before I was so rudely interrupted. Well, you stay put. I'll see if I can find Gina Bartelli. I don't want you running into your two friends again. I can take care of myself. I seem to remember that night we met in Frankfurt. You landed flat on your back. I've been trying to forget that. Look, please, do as I say and stay put. Joe and I can take care of this. Ugh. Frank Hardy is the most exasperating, annoying, frustrating... Cute. No. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are you going? Two people searching a train is faster than one. But Frank... Frank said to stay here. And I'm going to stay here, after I found the girl. Well, can't argue with that logic. Just any girl, but uh, you can. Come back to get whatever it was you missed the first time? I only took a photograph. Yeah, I know. You, uh, in the habit of collecting other people's memories? I wanted to be sure that Fenton Hardy was the right man. I cannot afford to make a mistake. Then you don't know my father. I know of your father and his reputation with Interpol. I know he is a very kind man who would help me. But first, I need your help. To do what? I want to defect to the West. This is where we are going, Altair in Austria. This is the route of the downhill event. You will see that it passes through the tip of this gray shaded area. That, my friend, is Switzerland. And Switzerland is a neutral country. You can seek asylum there. That's right. Austria is not an Iron Curtain country, but 
they do not take kindly to defectors thrusting them into the political arena, it has to be Switzerland. There's an old deserted cabin in the mountains, right in here, that was once a ski lodge. If I could make it to there, and transportation was waiting, it could take me into Zurich, where the authorities would be ready to receive me. If my father could make the arrangements. Exactly. But you and your father helped me. Look, I don't mean to put too fine a point on this, but what will they do to us? I mean, what will the authorities do if we're caught? They might shoot you. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to say that. I know what I am asking. There's no reason why you should risk your life or the life of your brother for a stranger. But you possess something I do not. The thought of it fills my every waking hour. You cannot know what it means unless you have stood and watched the tanks rolling down your street like so many faceless monsters. Freedom. That is what I ask. Who else knows about this? No one. I cannot stay long. The uh, secret police, they watch me at all times. Only on the ski slopes am I free. We could phone my father from the ski lodge in Altair. Now, I don't know if he's gonna have time to make all the arrangements, but... I suppose it's possible. Then you will do it? I'll talk to my brother. I'm very grateful. Just be grateful when you get to Switzerland. Yeah. So you're a detective? Part-time investigator. What do you do, Mr. Somerville? It's Alan. What do you do, Alan? Well, I'm a sports writer. I cover all the major events, and Altair is one of the most important. That's why you're here? Why else would I be here? Why, indeed. Did you ever find that girl you were looking for? Not yet, but I will. I've got to. You see, there was a mix-up. She picked up my bag, and I picked up hers. She's got my passport and all my traveler's checks. But I need to trust someone. And somehow I feel I can trust you. Trust me with what? I came across something in Gina's bag. That's her name, Gina Bartelli. Something very valuable. I don't know what to do with it. What is it? I'd have to show you. Hey, Frank. Oh, Your brother's looking for you. My brother? Yeah, you know, that uh, blonde kid uh, sings a little bit. Oh, him. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Nancy, I need to talk to you. It's important. Can I see you later? Oh, fine. Thanks. Who is he? That's what I was trying to find out. Our paths have been crossing, deliberately, I'd say. He says his name's Alan Somerville and that he's a sports writer. Somerville, Somerville, I've never heard of him. I saw him talking to the two men who threatened me, like he was giving them orders. I, I thought I told you to stay put. And I told you I can take care of myself. Yes, I remember that. After you. Just what did you hope to gain by having lunch with him? His trust. I told him about the mix-up in bags and that I'd come across something very valuable. I wanted him to look at it for me. What were you going to show him? I figure he's got to know what it is. He'll show me. Now, what's so important? I found the girl. I don't know. I don't know what it's all about. I swear to you, I don't know what it is they want. Tell us what you do know. Well, my my brother Dominic and I were never really close. He was much older. I hadn't seen him in years. The last time was just before he went to Vietnam. After the war, he disappeared. No one in the family knew what had happened to him. I thought he was dead. Then about six weeks ago, I started receiving letters from here. These letters? Yes. It was quite a shock to hear from him. He sounded frightened. He insisted that I come to Budapest. What happened when you did? He died the day before I arrived. Pneumonia. It's ironic. Ever since we were children, he had wanted to live in the mountains. He liked the cold. What'd you do then? I collected his things. 
They're all here. Everything. But he had a chateau. There must have been furniture, other possessions. Oh, the chateau was all boarded up. He'd liquidated everything. All the authorities could give me were the things that he took with him to the hospital. Who are the men who were after your brother? I don't know. They told me that that they were, were old friends from the war. That Dominic had something that belonged to them. Something worth a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million dollars? And that I had it now. It had been in cash. They said that he converted it into something small enough to carry. Something here. But what? Not the letters, but the stamps. One of those stamps, maybe. No, I went through the stamps. They're all canceled. A microdot. It's just a thought. Well, it's not here. We've been through everything. I'm sorry I got you involved in this. I... I just didn't want them to find me with the bag. I meant to switch them back as soon as I found you on the train. Well, we're all involved in it now. When we get to Altair, we'll inform the authorities as to what's happening. For all we know, the quarter million dollars may still be in the chateau. Uh, this purse is mine. I think in the meantime, we should all stick together for the rest of the journey. Oh, no. I've caused you too much trouble already. I'll be all right. I just talked to Somerville. That Drew girl has it. She knows what it is. Then what do we do now? We gotta get it. First, we gotta lose a witness right off this train.
What happened to you? He... He saved my life. I nearly buried the train, is what I did. You started the avalanche. No, not exactly. I... I think we ought to get together and start comparing notes on what's going on on this train. I've got a lot to tell you. I've got a lot to tell you, too. Well, the police searched the train station. There was no sign of either of them. They're going to give Gina full protection and escort to Vienna where she can fly home. I guess that's it. We may never know what it was they were after. I wouldn't be so sure. I guess I could have been wrong about him, but I don't think so. Right. OK. Well, you know how train trips are. I will, I will. Bye, Dad. Okay, you're all set. There'll be a car waiting at the cabin to take you to the Pelikanstrasse in Zurich. You'll meet a man by the name of Wilhelm Hovard. Talk to him, nobody else. Here's your timetable. You have to stick to this, because they won't wait one second past the time. And once you've started, you keep going. You keep going, you don't stop for anything. I understand. Okay, it's up to you. What makes me think it's not all over? What could they possibly want? You gave Gina back the bag with everything in it. Unless they still think you have whatever it is. Is there anything of Gina's, anything from that bag you still have? No, nothing, nothing at all. Wait a minute. Gina asked me for change in the train station. For the phone. I handed it to her, and she gave me some coins in return. Where are they? In my purse. Wait a minute. What is it? Do you think that could really be worth a quarter of a million dollars? A nickel? If it's the one I think it is. We'll find out after the competition. I'll call the police and get someone to come up here. You sure there's no mistake, huh? That's fine, mighty fine. Sure does help to know what you're looking for. Right. Right. Well, we'll get it. What? A nickel worth conservatively $250,000. Come on. And now, continuing with our coverage of the downhill event here at the Altair Ski Championships. All of the participants have taken their first run, and it looks like the real competition in this event is between Hans Machten of Hungary and Paul Layton of the United States. Machten had the best time on the first run, a dazzling 127.17. That puts him well out ahead of the field, with the exception of Leighton, who at 128.23 is the only skier who has a chance of catching Mockton in this event. Nine the gate, number 12. Nine the gate, number two. Leighton of the 
Keep going, you don't stop for anything. Get 
That's the gun! This man just tried to kill a friend of mine. Wait. What happened to the other guy? He's not a very good skier. He kept falling. You all right? I owe you my life. I've also ruined your chances in the tournament. There's still a chance. Oh, no, it's too late. They will not bait at the cabin. The timing was the split second. There will be another time. Now that you can do it, well, let's make a chain now. Come on, baby, do the locomotion. Chug a chug a motion like a railroad train now. Come on, baby. Do the locomotion. Do it nice and easy now. Don't lose control. A little bit of rhythm and a lot of soul. So come on, come on. Do the locomotion with me. Come on, baby. Do the locomotion. So come on, come on. Do the locomotion with me. to be the champion well to tell you the truth it feels um natural completely natural <laughs> never change do you paul i hope not well thank you mm. <laughs> you know i can't get over what was happening on this train right under my nose <laughs> how does it feel to be carrying around a nickel worth a quarter of a million dollars it would have felt scary if i'd known but none of us knew did we none of us